Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Well, church militants not having a very good Christmas. And before I continue, I'm not here to, you know, put salt on the wound for anyone who's going to lose their job. I'm very sad for anyone who loses their job. But I'm talking here about the organization, which I've talked about before. And I believe it is an awful, terrible, wicked organization. I think it fooled Catholics for many years, many good Catholics. I'm not blaming anyone if they were fooled. But there were warning signs for a long time about the on-air personalities and Church Militant itself. Um, and I'm very happy that Church Militant is being destroyed. Um, I'm not going to go so far as say God is destroying Church Militant because I'm not going to say I have any insight into the will of the Almighty beyond the average person. <clears throat> Excuse me. Beyond the average person. But I will say, you know, there's a common expression, there is no justice in this world. Well, sometimes... I think there is justice in this world because Church Milton has been engaging in a form of slanderous yellow journalism. If you don't know what that means, that's basically like tabloid journalism. Tabloids often do sort of tell the truth, kind of, but then they extrapolate things and they play with words and they spin it into something that it's not. Often they do lie. And it looks like Church Milton is actually on the ropes and is selling all its property. Um, we're going to go into an article about that explains all that and why... Church Milton's probably not going to make it until February, which is when they have their ridiculous Lenten cruise scheduled. Sorry if I offend anybody here, but I can't understand why anyone in their right mind would go on a cruise during Lent. Like, all-you-can-eat buffets, you know? Like, drinking a bunch of drinks and eating a ton of food for a week. That's what you're going to do during Lent? I'm sorry, I just find that absurd. I think it just tells you everything you need to know about Church Milton or as an organization that they would call themselves a Catholic organization, but then would schedule a time for feasting and debauchery during a season of penance anyway. Um, in any case, Church Milton is going under. It's probably not going to make it to February. Praise God. It's a wicked organization. Again, I'm sorry if anyone lost their jobs, but wicked, wicked organizations must be destroyed. Um, one thing that is happening in February, though, which is not a wicked organization and which actually will inspire you to live as a real faithful traditional Catholic is the Canadian Martyrs Men's Conference. You can find the link for that in the description to this podcast. Father Rion, uh, Michel Rion is the keynote speaker. He's a wonderful preacher, great priest. We have the privilege of knowing him very closely as a family friend, spiritual father to our family. It's $100 Canadian. Seats are filling up. We had to get a new venue for the night before uh, we have this social... Uh, Father, you can see there, Father Stannis will be there as well. Myself, Tim Flanders giving talks. Um, the, the night before, after evening mass, there is a meet and greet that's actually, uh, it, it's listed as at a pub um, on the website, but it's actually going to be at the local legion. We had to get a bigger space. So stay tuned for more details for that if you want to sign up for it. Full day of talks, friendship, fellowship, all these sorts of things. Um, and uh, we've got a great day of Catholic manly, traditional Catholic information, fellowship, spirituality, and so on and so forth. Also, if you are looking to be a sponsor, there's still time for that. Um, uh, there'll be a, a men there with uh, the, the desire to probably buy some things. So if you want to, um, you know, be a sponsor and get your name out there, please uh, send an email to the, uh, you can go to the contact us uh, portion of this. If you want to buy tickets now, you can just contact through here. It's pretty simple. If you uh, can't figure it out, just uh, send me an email through uh, the, the, the contact me thing through uh, the website here underneath my show. Anyway, Canadian Martyrs Men's Conference filling up. Going to be great. Get your tickets while supplies last. So Church Milton is going to be gone pretty soon. In fact, yesterday they had uh, basically a, um, a hearing with the judge. We're going to go through the context of that. So I'm just going to pull, pull up that article. Now, I don't know much about this Simca Fisher person. I've been told, and I, this is my basic, very minimal information, that this person is not really known for being friendly to traditional Catholics. I figure. Um, I don't know what the case is, what the deal is with this Simca Fisher. I think this is written by her husband, Damien Fisher. I'm not advocating for any of the other work. This is just happens to be excellent work about what's actually going on. One of the only... Um, one of the only... Uh, uh, writers kind of doing this sort of real on the ground journalism about it. So here's what it is. Church militant loses control of finances in emergency December 26th hearing. 
Um, so Michael Voris apparently said in the Zoom hearing, which these journalists uh, watched and reported on, somehow things have gotten out of control. So I'll make this a little bit bigger here and we'll go through the information. At the end of Tuesday's emergency court hearing held the day after Christmas, United States District Court Judge Joseph LaPlante had pointed parting words for Michael Voris and Mike Sherry. Mr. Voris, Mr. Sherry, I look forward to your retention of counsel, LaPlante said. Sherry, the current president of Church Milton's board, and Voris, the now disgraced former board president and founder, agreed to an order that essentially gives New Hampshire priest, the Reverend George Delaire, control over Church Milton finances pending the outcome of a defamation lawsuit. So if you don't know the background there, what's happening is there's a priest in the New Hampshire diocese. I don't know anything about this priest. I'm not commenting whether or not he's a good priest. I don't know. I'm just saying that there's a lawsuit where he's essentially suing the folks at Church Milton. I don't know if it's an organization as such. It must be. Um, and I believe Voris and Niles, I think, for defamation, for their um, their wicked journalism that they've done. So, so that's happening there. Um, it continues. Um, Neither is currently represented by a lawyer. The result of Voris is so far disastrous legal machinations. The opinion of the author, I can't say yes or no whether or not that's true. And perhaps the first good decision Voris has made in the case, he he appeared in Tuesday's Zoom call as an audio-only participant. Not really sure what that's about, but anyway. Voris and his assistants at Church Militant, Christine Niles and Simon Rafe, are accused, okay, there you go, in court documents of hiding and destroying evidence. Now, they're accused. We're not saying that it's proven, but that's the accusation. Voris is also accused of lying about basic facts of the case, hiding the identity of key figure Mark Balistrieri, who I guess is a lawyer, using church militant money to give Balistrieri an interest-free loan and later threatening Balistrieri when it seemed his testimony could hurt Voris. If that's true, that's a pretty big deal. Voris and church militant defending themselves in court, judge advises a different plan. Laplante, the judge, was blunt with the pair, telling them church militant's legal defense up to this point has been troubling. Unorthodox is the most charitable word I can use, Laplante said. The way it's being conducted is troubling from the defense's perspective. In August... Voris's attorney, attorneys Kathleen Klaus and Neil Nicholson, quit the case a day after Niles admitted her under oath that she had been sitting on text with Balistrieri that should have been turned over as evidence. That's pretty bad. LaPlante said Klaus and Nicholson quit because they could not continue due to the conflict of one of the parties in the case. Last week, LaPlante allowed New Hampshire attorney Richard Lehman to quit the defense, Lehman cited an untenable conflict of interest that meant he could not represent both St. Michael's Media and Voris. So it's St. Michael's, so it's Church Milton and Michael Voris, the individuals, as well as the organization. Howard Cooper, Delaire's attorney, Delaire is the uh, priest, remember, said in court the conflict came about because members of Church Milton's board want to pursue criminal charges against Voris. Criminal charges. That's a big deal. Now, uh, from what I can tell from what I've been reading from this reporter about this, um, I personally think it has to do with the, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to spread misinformation, so to speak, but I believe it has to do with the um, the reality of being on a nonprofit board. So just as a little background, if you have a nonprofit in the United States, I don't know if it's the same in Canada. I've never been on a board in Canada. It's probably similar. We have pretty similar laws with those sorts of things. In any case, if you're on a nonprofit board, you have this nonprofit status for a very particular reason, um, which helps you with taxes and so on and so forth. And, but you have to meet those criteria. So for example, if you're a news organization, you can have a news nonprofit uh, designation in Canada. I imagine, I think it's the same in the States. I'm, I'm, I'm actually positive it is. You receive donations. So because of that, you have this special tax status. And if you are negligent with the finances of the organization or use them in ways that are against what is required as per the type of nonprofit that it is. Like if you're taking organize, if you're taking money to be a news organization, little old ladies are giving you money, they're giving you parts of their retirement because they think it's good what you're doing. And it turns out that, you know, you bought a quote unquote new studio, but the president of the company happens to live in the building that you bought and the studio is just like one room at the front of the house and the rest of it's just his mansion. You know, there's something where you can actually be criminally charged because it's it's kind of a matter of, of perjury or dishonesty. It's a matter of negligence with finances, and it can actually become criminal. I think that's what's going on here. Um, Voris, perhaps trying to refute the idea he is criminally, li criminally liable, spoke up during the hearing to set the record straight about Layman's departure. Somehow things have gotten out of control, Voris said. 
Voris started to explain that he and Sherry as a pair did not ask Layman about separate defenses. Instead, Voris started to say that both he and Sherry had private conversations with Layman about different possibilities for the defense. It was at this point Lapl Laplante stopped Voris from speaking. I don't know where you're going with this, Laplante said. The judge then explained to Voris that his statements were approaching a legal line, and if he continued talking, he would be effectively waiving attorney-client privilege with Layman, and all his communications with the former attorney would become discoverable in the trial. Voris tried to simplify his message while protecting his interests. Mr. Sherry and I have not arrived at a decision that we are two competing parties, Voris said. Voris followed this statement with a drawn-out explanation that the pending sale of Church Milton's only real estate, real assets, two office buildings in Ferndale, Michigan, which were the subject of Tuesday's hearing, have nothing to do with the De Blair lawsuit, sure. Laplante responded that the reason for the sale is not relevant to the hearing to decide what happens to the money. I don't know what you want me to do with that information, Laplante said. When Voris then tried to explain he had not had a chance to speak to Sherry about these matters before Tuesday's hearing, the judge seemed surprised. That's mystifying, Laplante said. Um, the lawsuit against Voris and Michael and St. Michael's Daisy. The lawsuit against um, Voris and St. Michael's Media is now a legal slow motion car wreck playing out as St. Michael's media operation Church Milton scrambles to stay afloat after Voris was pushed out in November amid allegations of sexual and financial misconduct. Hemorrhaging donations in wake of the scandal, the Michigan nonprofit is about to close on a deal to sell the two office buildings, one which is home to Church Milton's offices and studio. But under the agreement reached Tuesday, the proceeds of these sales set to close Thursday are now frozen in an escrow account. Okay, it goes on to explain... The basically the details of the escrow. Um, so if you don't know what escrow is, basically when you're in one of these situations, the money has to be put into account for various legal reasons and you can't just kind of have access to it and do whatever you want. Um, the reason is, is because uh, there's, a, there's a necessity to have access to that money for a particular legal problem. In this case, it's to do with a lawsuit. So the judge has ordered that the money will be put into escrow, which means... Um, uh, yes, they can sell the buildings, but they can't just take that money and then just go off and spend it on a cruise. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and then the article went on to say that they've been allowed a certain amount of money to keep things in afloat for a little bit at Church Militant. Um, but if you actually look into what's been going on, they've been appealing for donations and they say they're not going to make it till February. They're still advertising that cruise. So if you are, I mean, listen, Church Militant is a sinking ship, pun intended, with the cruise coming up. If you are thinking of going on this cruise, you need to, I mean, I'm not telling you not to, I'm not going to say don't give your money to somebody in this case. I am in Canada, so Church Milton can't sue me, so there you go. Um, nonetheless, um, nonetheless, don't give your money to a sinking ship and then go on a ship with that sinking ship. That's absurd. And at this point, they're just going to close down. I mean, there's no way Church Milton's going to survive this. And that's a very good thing because Church Milton has been caught I won't use the caught with the pants down analogy. Um, Church Milton has been caught with massive financial problems, possible criminality, um, and they've been just spreading lies about people for a long time. You know what Church, I've said this before, but if you haven't listened to me on it, what Church Milton has done for a long time is they've taken like pieces of truth and then they've spun that into a narrative. They're, they're the right wing equivalent of a CNN. They're the reverse, they're the photo negative of leftism. That, that, that's all they are. And people have been duped by that because they're so appalled with how the left operates, with how the liberal Catholics operate, that they sort of latched on to this very, you know, Fox Newsy thing. And back in the day, you can find more, Mike Voris was talking about wanting to turn Church Milton into the Fox News of Catholicism. That's awful. I mean, listen, Fox News, they had Tucker Carlson for a while. Obviously, if they're going to report on something, there's a, a higher chance it's going to be better than CNN. But Fox News is still just a for-profit organization that has no worry about the Sixth and Ninth Commandment. They don't worry about modesty. They don't worry about, you know, the things that you should be worried about as a Catholic if you're trying to live a moral life. I mean, Fox News, again, are they better than church? Are they better than CNN? Well, yeah, because, I mean, like if somebody threw spaghetti at a wall, it'd be a more accurate news representation in CNN, but 
That's not saying much. It's still, you know, Fox News is still a very immoral organization. Um, and Tucker Carlson, who's the closest thing to a moral reporter that we probably have in the mainstream, what happens to him? He, he gets kicked out. And that just shows you everything you need to know. So Trich Milton has been unethical for a very long time. And there may be no justice in this world, but there are judges in this world. And he's handing out uh, the comeuppance to Trich Milton. So Trich Milton's going under. They're going to be gone soon, and the world will be a better place for it. If you're an employee of Trich Milton, I'm sorry you've gone through this, and I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Um, but quite frankly, if you couldn't see how your organization was a wicked, wicked place for many years, I'm not judging. You know, you've got scenarios, you've got bills to pay. Maybe that's where your line of work is. I'm, you know, you're a pencil pusher. I get it. I'm not saying everybody has to jump shit from every place just because they're doing things wrongly. I get it. I mean, I used to work in a teacher's union. I eventually got out, but I worked for a teacher's union that I knew was really shady the way that they were handling education. And it was just, it was a bad place. So I eventually did, but I couldn't for a while. So I get that. I'm just saying, if you were under the impression that everything was fine at Church Milton, then you're part of the problem because it's a wicked place. Wicked, wicked, awful place. And thanks be to God that it's going to be removed from the Catholic media sphere. And I, I'm, I'm very happy about that. Um, so, in any case, don't go on their cruise in February if you uh, don't want to go on a sinking ship metaphorically and hopefully not literally. Instead, come to the Canadian Martyrs Men's Conference. Find a link for that in the description to this video. As always, let me know what you think in the comments. This has been the Kennedy Report. Until next time, God bless.